In March 1940, despite six months of war, it was to be business as usual at Sueby Hall and Gardens, and the Yorkshire Post announced that the golf course, archery and rifle ranges would all be open to the public for the Easter holidays. But this could not last, and in the summer of 1940, Bridlington was declared a defence area. Access to the beach was restricted, and an evening curfew imposed. Sueby Hall and Gardens, once described as Bridlington's beauty spot, would, for the next five years, have a new role, supporting the nation's war effort. The East Riding was a busy place in the Second World War. Airfields sprang up to accommodate bombers that would take the war to Hitler's Germany, and the RAF also operated rescue boats out of Bridlington Harbour. The Wolds became a training ground for Allied troops of all nationalities, and tanks could be found at Sueby Heads, whilst the boarding houses of Bridlington became home to thousands of soldiers. Sueby Hall's main role during the war was as a hospital of 80 beds for personnel from RAF Bridlington, Carnaby, Catfoss and Lysit. The drawing room and orangery were converted into wards and beds were often moved outside to allow recuperation in the gardens. Patients remembered that the food was good, the nurses kind and the peacocks from the aviary were loud. A detachment of Royal Engineers assigned to bomb disposal duties were also based at the hall and they were kept busy. 27 people died in air raids over Bridlington and over a hundred buildings were destroyed, amongst them Foley's Café established in the early 1900s by the Hall's former butler. It was not just the house that was called on, the grounds too did their bit, as land girls ploughed up the lawns to grow food crops. By Christmas 1944 the end of the war was in sight, and in the following February it was announced that the grounds, golf course and aviary were open once again. The war in Europe finally ended on the 8th of May 1945, and the war against Japan on the 15th of August. In the months that followed, the house and garden were demobbed, and on the 10th of June 1946 they were officially reopened. A little battered from the experience, but Bridlington's beauty spot once again. <laughs>